So welcome back guys. This is part two of how to become an international street performer. Um, as you've seen before, we're going to take, take off where we've left off and get right into it. So I guess uh, the next little thing to have would be um, if, if you have done some festivals, you've got to know them, they like you, all of this, um, good to have them as a reference. So um, yeah, just write down the name of the festival owner, uh, the organization, this is Busco Inn Festival, where it is, um, their email address, um, their website. Just it's good to have, and even the more you have, probably the better. Um, next I have, um, I've just got like uh, my highlight festivals uh, just on the front page. Um, so yeah, just ones that I've won and ones that I've done things. Um, ones where are big festivals where I've been asked back a few times. Um, and then basically, but also uh, all the festivals. So you click on there and it goes down all the different festivals I've sort of done. Um, and yeah, just highlight where you've actually done something good. And I also, uh, if, I've, if I've been to it before, like this one six times. Um, so yeah, I write it in there. Try and even see if you can highlight it. I might even try and fix that up and highlight it. Um, that I have been there six times. Because it shows that um, people like you, you know, that they wouldn't call you back if they didn't like you. So. To, to say you've been, been to a festival three times, six times, I mean, sure, yeah, it, it's working and, and people like what you do. No, another good thing which um, which I haven't got in this one, I, I had what I can, what Chris Blaze can do for you and I have like magazine covers and, uh, and uh, a link to some videos where I've been on TV stations and stuff. This, I don't know whether it helps, but it, it, it kind of makes you look a little bit better, I guess, a little bit more professional. Shows that you're willing to help them to promote their festival, because obviously the more the festival is promoted and, and you're seen as a front runner for it, uh, people are going to come on and want to come and watch your show. So really, I, I advise you to spend the time. Sometimes you've got to be up early, like uh, you might go drinking that night before because you meet all your friends, but um, then they'll want you to get up at six in the morning to then go in and do the morning show and all this. Just do it because people are like, oh, I'm going to go to the festival. Oh, Chris Blaze, look at the program. They saw you on TV. Ah, oh, Chris Blaze, cool. I'm going to go watch that. One more thing, one last thing, which is really important, which I, I think is to have it in different languages. So, uh, most of my work is in Germany. So I have like, uh, basically what you've just seen there, I have it again, but I have it in German. Right, so the same sort of thing, but in German. Okay. Uh, and obviously have, I have French, um, Sp Spanish and Italian. Um, with Italian, it's good to know the language or get an, um, an agent which can do all the talking for you because it's very hard to get booked for either Italian festivals or French festivals if you can't communicate with them. Um, so I get a friend to help me out type thing. I did have an agent at one point which helped me out with it. Uh, so yeah, this is this is kind of what I do. I get someone to help me. Um, so and, and it, that kind of goes quite far to the, that you actually make the effort to put in a different language and all that kind of thing. So promo video. Now promo videos is probably the most important thing besides your website. The website promo video. That's what you need to spend the most amount of money on. Um, so, like uh, I said in, I said before, it, uh, it needs to be around a minute, minute and a half. Okay, you don't really want to go much more than that because people they'll skip through it and they might miss good bits of it. Good bits of it. So um, there's a link below on a few other really good um, promo videos which are better than mine. Okay, 
Now there's a few key factors, okay, that you need in your promo video. One being obviously all your skill sets, all this kind of thing. Um, next being that you can handle big crowds um, and a lot of shots of audience. Okay, now this is where I kind of lack a little bit in my in my um, my videos. You need a lot of crowd interaction shots. Um, you need you need to show people having a really good time and you interacting with them, making people laugh. It's all about this. So within one minute, you need to be able to pretty much portray that you're a really cool person, a nice person. Um, and the people are having a good time, you can handle good crowds, and you're good at what you do, at your, your props or whatever you're doing. These are the most key things that you need to know, you need to know. and the video can't be too long. Okay, minute, minute and a half, that's it. Like I said, there'll be a link below um, on a few different um, promo videos from friends, which I think uh, are what you're really looking for, and they get a lot of festivals. Okay. And that another sort of important thing is to have um, have your name there, like uh, Chris Blaze, boom, 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 and, uh, won this festival and this, or been here and been here three times. Just have flashes of this. This is really cool thing to have as well. But um, uh, it goes back to what I was saying, spend money to make money. So it's very hard when you, when you first start out, um, like you'll probably be able to find videographers, but they don't, they don't do what you want them to do because most videographers think, oh, it's all about, about showing the fire and, and the skill, where it's, it's not about this. Yes, you want to do this, but it's, it's mainly about the audience. So I recommend trying to find um, videographers that do it for street performance. Now you can pay up to 500 euros for this. Now that's quite, it's worth it. It's 100% worth it. They'll come to a festival, try and get it where there's big crowds, okay? You need to have big crowds behind you. Try and have it in two different venues, two different spots, two different shows, and good camera work. It has to be very, very good camera work. Moving shots, okay? Not just one, one angle, standing there, one spot, okay? It's gotta be moving shots, shots from here, here, everywhere, okay? The more, the more it's moving, the more things are going on, the better it'll be. Okay, so festivals. How do you find festivals? How do you know that they're a good festival? All of this kind of thing. That's a bloody very, 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 very good question. Okay. Um, it took me a lot of years. It took me a good three years until I started getting a gist of how it all works. So I'm going to tell you a few trade secrets, which I wish I would have known to begin with. So first of all, okay, um, you don't know what festivals, okay, go online, type in street art festivals, busking festivals, and, uh, and look them up, okay, so basically the best festivals are Germany, um, Austria, Switzerland, uh, a lot of festivals in Switzerland are very, very good. Um, so yeah, basically they're, they're the main places in Europe, okay? Uh, UK can be good as well. The way I like to really put it um, is you got, so let's call Switzerland the heart, all right? And the further you go out from Switzerland, all right, the less money you're gonna get from the, the audience, okay, in, in your hats, all right? Further you go down to, um, to Italy, further you go more to um, Eastern European countries, less money you're gonna get in your hats. So that means you have to ask for more money out of the festival, okay, to, to compensate. Now usually you'll get your travel money, you'll get your food, and you'll get your accommodation. If you don't get, um, if you don't get your, your accommodation and your travel, I don't like to support these type of festivals, okay? Because they're getting you cheap enough as it is, okay? Because please understand a lot of these 
people that are running these festivals are getting good, good paid government grants out of the, their cities. Okay, so the, what they're doing is they're getting you for nothing and pocketing a lot of the money. Okay, so I don't like to support these type of festivals. Right, so they have to at least supply your accommodation, your travel, uh, and and basically food. But you can get away with sometimes not no food. Um, but yeah, and, and a fee. Um, it, it all depends. Maybe five hundred thousand. 2,000, 3,000, depending on the festival, okay? Um, and this is how, and you just gotta work out what you're worth. What do you think you earn on the street, right? And judge that, that's what you're worth at a festival. Otherwise, you might as well go and work the streets, right? So don't go and work a festival where you're gonna earn less during the festival than you would staying at your own home pitch. Okay, that's how to judge what you're worth. So all the plane flights, everything, add it all up. From the minute you walk out of your door, you do the festival and you come home, all right? So that may be taking you three days to get four days to go and do. How much would have you made at home? So that that's the, you want to come home with the, at least the same amount of money out of what you get in the hat, everything, okay? At least, this is how to work it out. Um, and a lot of it comes down to trial and error. Um, and getting to know people, people trust you, they'll tell you, uh, now this is good, this is not a good festival, ask for more money, ask for this, blah, blah, blah. But if you work off that, that thing of the heart being um, Switzerland and, and moving out and asking for more money from there, excuse me, uh, then, then you'll be fine. Uh, America. Um, can be very hard because of all the permits, all this kind of thing. I've, I've never had too many good experiences coming out of um, out of America. Um, Canada, Canada is very good. There's a lot of very good festivals, especially for English-speaking people uh, with Eng with the real d -d 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 talk show. They love it. Uh, very good crowds, very good people. Recommend going. Um, Ireland's good, uh, New Zealand's great, Australia, there's not too many busking festivals, there is a couple, um, but uh, you know, you've got uh, Adel Adelaide Fringe Festival, Perth Fringe, and there's a couple of busking festivals, but there's not a great deal in Australia, you also come for New Zealand tour come over to Australia and do a couple of bits and pieces and maybe work a uh, raw street. Um, but you do need a lot of permits and, and um, work permit uh, to then get the busking permit, plus insurances, all this kind of thing. So it, it can be quite hard in Australia. Everywhere else in the world that I've known, like that I haven't mentioned, there, there's busking, there's festivals, all this kind of thing, but they basically just pay for themselves. So usually in the winter time, I get a lot of friends, I do it too, um, go to like Dubai and go to Malaysia and South America and all this, but, and, and, um, and India and places like this. These will basically just pay your way, like uh, it'll be a free trip. Okay, so it's, it's pretty good, like you're traveling the world for free uh, and you'll live like a king, right? But you're just not gonna save money. Uh, but yeah, you go to South America and you bust the streets and you go and do the, the street festivals there. You'll earn good money for there and you'll live like a king while you're there, but you try and bring some money home with you, forget about it, okay? So that's basically how it all works. So yeah, when I'm, when I'm playing for festivals, the festivals usually start uh, in October and you can apply basically up until uh, January. So obviously the, the summer season usually starts around May uh, and goes till the end of September. That's usually the summer season. Um, so obviously the May gigs are in October and so on and so on. Uh, and so sort of the September gigs, you apply for them in January. Uh, you, you get my point. Um, so yeah, get on the internet, have a look at the busking festivals, wait to see if they're a good festival, um, go on to their, um, their Facebook page. So you find a festival, go onto a Facebook page, uh, have a look at the photos. 
okay? And if you see that it is a busking festival, um, and, if, and, and they've got street style shows, like uh, pictures of street style shows, and you've got big crowds, all this kind of thing, chances are it's gonna be a good festival. Okay, so apply for it, blah, 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 blah. If you've got some friends, uh, you can hit me up, ask me as well, if you, if you get booked for a festival and you wanna know what to, what to charge for it and all this, you can always ask me. Uh, I've got a good intel now of, of all the festivals around the world and what to charge. Um, but yeah, basically that, that's the way to go. Just uh, jump on, research the festival as much as you can, but Facebook is your key. Um, then go on the website, see where, if there's an application form. If you can't find where to apply, uh, best place to ask them, like you can email them, right? And go, okay, uh, I'd really, really like to come to your festival, blah, blah, blah. Just put a little, um, uh, what do you call it, link to your, your promo video and your, your uh, website in, in there. And I'd love to come to your festival. How do I apply, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then there'll be two ways to apply. So one, there'll be an application form that you've got to fill out, which will come out at a certain time. They will tell you when, um, or you've just got to email all your stuff to them. Okay. So basically with, with an email one, I give them this. So yeah, so first, what I would do is um, copy paste or like a, set up a copy paste setup. So basically, I'll uh, open up an email, I'll um, uh, copy all the text in. So basically, here's all my text um, Chris Blaze and my wife, because I, I, I do it for my wife as well. Uh, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm bloody, I'm, Anna, I'm Chris and Anna. This is who we are, we travel around the world, we do shows, both our shows, blah, blah, blah. You can just have a look at that if you like. Um, and then I'll put my um, uh, my promo right up there. Uh, and I'll have a picture above it. And a picture above there, picture above Chris Blaze. Uh, and then down here, I'll have all my details. So my website, my email address, my phone number or WhatsApp, get WhatsApp, always have WhatsApp. Uh, my Facebook, I mean, yeah, Facebook, my Instagram, uh, my nighttime promo. Vimo is always a good good way to do it too. Okay, you now Vimo, um, have a look into Vimo. It's better than YouTube when you're doing your promo videos, okay? Reason being, if you're using, um, uh, like music from someone else um, and you put it on YouTube it's a good chance they can wipe it and and some countries like Germany can't even watch it so you just send all these promo videos out to people and they can't even watch it on YouTube so if you do up a Vimo thing it costs you I don't know, 10 bucks a month or something but totally worth it get Vimo uh, and download your videos there and give them that link um, a good thing to do too is have a, a raw setup. So your whole show, cut out like a little bit of the crowd build at the start and all this kind of thing, but basically start to finish your whole show. Okay, so they want to see what you do in your whole show. Not everyone's going to want to watch that, but some people do want to watch that. Watch your whole show. So yeah, and then, like I said, like, because that's all my wife's, and then best, and then I put a picture at the bottom here as well. Uh, best regards, proud of the family, Chris and Anna, blah, blah, blah. Thank to see you, talk to you soon. So that's a really good thing to have. But this one right here, that's what I send out to a festival. Uh, if, uh, if I'm trying to find out how to apply and all this kind of thing. So basically, hi, very nice to meet you. My wife and I would love to come to your festival, blah, blah, blah. Uh, thank you for your time. Hope to hear from you soon. I just put my website. Uh, yeah, just both our websites, I guess, and they can go through and have a look. Um, but like I said, the, the best way to uh, get a reply from them would be on their Facebook page. To message them on their Facebook page. It's so much easier. Okay, a lot easier to do it this way. Um, and it's a lot easier to 
get all the information of their, like if someone just gives you a name of a festival, it's, uh, it's, it's quite hard to just look up um, the actual website sometimes, okay, because there'll be a lot of articles about that website and you'll, it'll just take you to different articles like um, of um, social media companies and stuff. So just go on the Facebook page, go on, on the About and it'll take you to the official uh, page, the official website page. And so yeah, when, when I'm applying for the, the online applications, I've also got it written down in just, um, usually uh, once you've done a few applications, you'll learn there's a certain format, there's a certain way that they write the, the applications, okay? So there's, um, so basically you'll know what to write, like you'll have a couple of different things that you, you write, so you don't have to write a whole new application every time. Um, you, you pretty much just put it in there and you know, okay, so they're asking that question, bam, click, paste, put it on there. Bam, click, paste, put it on there. And this makes it so much easier because I apply to like 500 festivals. Okay, so if you're just actually writing every application, it's gonna take you too long. So when you've written out an application, copy, paste everything, Right, and, and then sometimes the next one will ask you a slightly different question, but have that question there as well. So then you just, ah, oh, it's that question, okay, and put it over, boom, 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 boom. Yeah, so also have, um, have a little folder with all your uh, technical writer, uh, your rates, what, what your rate plan is, everything like this, and some photos. So you can just click paste, click paste, all the right photos. I want them in certain formats and stuff, so just make sure they're in the right formats. Um, yeah, you'll work that out. They'll they'll say it in the application. You just have to go on to a program and make sure it's certain size and certain this and everything like that. You work that out the hard way, but you'll get through it. So yeah, you can just go on there, click paste, boom, grab it all. So it's all there, ready to rock and roll. All right, to, to basically sum it all up, okay, um, with doing festivals, basically you need to be professional, you need to be a pro, so get out, get the best clothes that you can, like a, a nice outfit that's unique to you and, and what you're doing, very good sound system, spend the money to make money on a good sound system, relatable music, to what uh, people like, top 40 stuff, remix it if you like into a style that you like, make a lot of eye contact with people, you are working the street, it's not a normal stage show, so get out, involve people, uh, bring them part of your show, use volunteers, all this type of thing, don't stand on the spot, move around your stage, use your whole stage, okay, and if it looks like you're going to have a big, big uh, crowd, move them out and utilize that space and make them all a part of your show. Even if you've got a thousand people, make them all a part of your show. Spend the time. If, uh, if you're in a dark spot, make, try and get the festival to supply uh, lighting. Uh, maybe even put it in your, in your technical writer if you want that. Fire performers, make sure you're using 100% cotton clothes or Kevlar clothes. There's uh, a few people which have actually died only a year or two ago, which are actual professionals using all this fancy clothing, um, and it wasn't fireproof, okay? Uh, and they died, okay? And they were very time, big time professionals uh, trying to look fancy. So make sure you use 100% cotton, not too many dangly bits, all this kind of thing. Not a really cool thing. If you're using fuels, Make sure you're setting up a designated area. You've got caps for all, all your fuels, all bids, all this kind of thing. Uh, be as super safe as possible. Don't compromise one bit on safety. And make sure if you are using fire, nothing can fall off and go into the audience. I've seen it before, okay? Uh, things flying off and uh, hitting people and all this kind of thing. It's not a good look. It's not a good thing. Burn someone. Ruin your whole career. Yeah, that's it. Most most important thing to doing street, being successful, is being unique. So the more unique you are, the nicer you are, the humbler you are, the better you're going to do in this industry. Okay, don't go out and copy people. 
get ideas from other people's shows yet. Do not copy people word for word. It looks fake. People will see it on a subconscious level and it's just not going to work. Because we're, we're a very, very tight community. Even though it's worldwide, we all know each other. So we all know if you're copying off somebody else and all these kind of things. So get out, be yourself and be nice. The, more, the nicer you are, the more people are going to help you out and make you a better artist. Um, but yeah, this is one of the best jobs in the world if you can make it into it. So I wish you all the luck and I hope this really helped. Comment below if you want to hear more, uh, anything like this. If you liked it, let me know.